What's up everybody? It's your boy Justin with Herbal Lifestyle and it's a beautiful Saturday morning and today I'm heading over to a client's house that I've been working at for almost about a year. Um, we're gonna go see what progression the plants have been going through as well as we brought four new ones for them. We brought another mango, another uh, banana, as well as a Barbados cherry and a passion vine for the trellis that they built. So I'm almost at the property. Once I'm there, we'll get back in the video. If you uh, end up liking this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions or you'd like to leave any stories, please leave them in the comments below. I'll go ahead and read them later. And if you find this video informational, don't forget to share with at least one friend. Let's go and check this garden out. All right, so you know, once I arrived, I always like to work before I like to play. You know, we got all the plants planted in the ground. Now I wanna show you the progress that has been going on inside this garden. I am so happy to see the performance of some of these plants. So let me go ahead and kind of show you an overview of everything. And then we'll start talking about some of these plants that are growing and how wonderful they're doing here in Arizona, zone 9B in the center of Phoenix. So let's talk. So last spring, I started getting started in this garden. I <laughs> started getting started. So last spring, I was starting to work in this garden. I had to dig out a bunch of grass, um, add compost, add mulch, really get the microbial life uh, teeming and awake inside the soil. It's on a flood irrigated lot. So already had a lot of great you know, nutrients and content living inside the soil. But now this uh, garden is starting to really thrive and one of the plants I really want to talk about is this one right here. Let me show you it. So this tree right here is known as pigeon pea, also known as Cajun Cajun. Uh, this right here is a nitrogen fixing tree, has a beautiful tap root that sinks deep into the soil and it picks up a lot of minerals that end up inside these beautiful leaves and then you could chop them and drop them right on the floor and then you're applying it back to the soil for all your other plants to enjoy as well as every time you chop again it's a nitrogen fixing tree so the roots actually release nitrogen into the soil uh, also this tree is used in the caribbean a lot because of the edible peas that it grows you know these peas are typically used in caribbean cooking and it is a really tasty uh, nutrient dense food and it's a great supplement to have in your diet as well as it's a great plant to have in your yard. It is perfect for permaculture. It is a awesome plant for microclimates. I mean, it's grown so fast, so quick within this uh, eight months process. And we have a lot of stone fruit here. The stone fruit, you know, the peaches, the plums, the uh, apricot kind of took a hit, but that's totally fine. They're, they're gonna bounce back. You know, like this plum right here, it looks like it's really upset, but it's green on the inside, so it's still happy. Ooh. See this pigeon pea? This is another one. And this just gave me good shade inside this Arizona 100 degree weather. Okay, here's another beautiful plant you gotta check out. This tree right here, most of you know it. If you've been watching my channel or if you are into gardening at all and if you don't know it and you're new to the channel this tree right here is moringa moringa is one of the fastest growing trees in the world it's one of the hardiest trees when it comes to uh how much you could cut it back and it'll just keep growing uh it doesn't really like cold weather too much so i don't recommend growing it on the east coast but here on the west side it does really well uh it makes these giant seed pods that are also known as drumsticks uh, when they're dry like this, they have a nice uh, seed on the inside that is edible, okay? I'm just gonna pull one out for you. So we got one seed right here, this is edible. 
Uh, it will kind of change your taste buds for a short time, make things a little sweet. But this is a superfood. You know, you chew on this, it's a little bitter, tastes like medicine, but it's gonna get you through the day if you were low in nutrients. But the whole tree can be eaten and so can those uh, pods when they're young. So you're talking about, you can eat the leaves, the flowers, the pods, the seeds. You can even cut the bark and use that if you need it. Uh, it's a very medicinal, high nutrient dense tree. I highly recommend it in everyone's yard, especially here in Arizona. And in the winter time, all you do is you just cut it back at the base and in the spring, it shoots right back up again. It's a beautiful tree to have. I recommend you get it. So this is a newly planted Barbados cherry as well as a newly planted passion vine to grow on this iron trellis. This is a newly planted pomegranate. I planted it about eight months ago in the spring. And holy cow, we already have pomegranates loaded on it. This is either Ariana or Desertini, I cannot remember. Uh, we have some peppers, some peaches, some plums, kind of all growing in the mix. The peppers were either struggling or doing great, but here's another pomegranate either again, Ariana or Desertini, and we have more fruit. Gotta grow pomegranate. It's a desert loving plant, doesn't need too much water, and it's a beautiful plant. Even if you don't want the fruit, it's super ornamental. So I recommend growing it. Uh, everyone should have at least one pomegranate in their yard, just like at least one Moringa in their yard. I mean, look at all that shade it can provide for you. And then over here we have an apricot tree. I believe this is the Katie apricot. Good apricot to have, fast growing tree. Um, it's getting some shade from this ash tree, but again, that's why, that's why its leaves are doing so well compared to the rest of the stone fruit out here. Uh, however, uh, all the stone fruit here will do fine, but this one is gonna do great next year. I can imagine them having plenty of fruit. So let's move over to my favorite side of the yard. This is the tropical section. Okay, so we started planting about eight months ago, a few tropicals. One is carambola, also known as star fruit. Carambola is a really tasty fruit. It produces a lot of fruit when it starts fruiting for you. It likes to stay evergreen. It makes these beautiful leaf sets. And this one is just doing phenomenal regardless of the summertime. And right over here, Right over here, we have a Julie mango. My client was able to enjoy two mangoes off of it. They said one got too soft, but the other one was good. Again, Julie mango, look how hardy these leaves are. Now we are on the Western side of the yard. This is supposed to get the most sun. Over here, we have an elderberry. Now this elderberry took a shot from the summer. Definitely can use more water. Um, elderberries tend to grow in creeks, streams, and, and marshy areas. So they like a wet foot. So make sure if you have an elderberry, just keep it moist and it'll do fine. Um, we have carry mango. This is another one of those dwarf mango trees. Uh, doing very well, bright green leaves. Again, that's what you wanna see in your mangoes, as well as we have a nice hardy leaf going on. You know, following this into the winter, it's gonna be very important that your leaves are nice and strong and your plants nice and healthy. Here's another mango that we just picked up today and planted. This is the fruit punch mango. Fruit punch mango is supposed to be a very flavorful mango. We lost three avocados, but totally fine because Home Depot was able to return and pay back my clients. But we do have another avocado in the ground. That is a Mexicola and the client planted it themselves. Hopefully they will get some success. We do need a stronger microclimate for those avocados to grow. Over here we have the ice cream banana. That was recently planted, but right next to it is this Cavendish. And now the Cavendish did really well compared to the two Namwas that were planted earlier, eight months ago. And, you know, because of that, I always say, you know, variety is important, seeing what variety works for you, uh, making sure we are in the right microclimate for that variety, making sure you're either giving them enough water or don't give them too much, you know. Um, so these are the kind of things you want to think about when you are planting up a food forest, when you are getting yourself a dense, heavy fruiting garden. And you always want plants to help you out with microclimate, like this one right here. This is morning glory. It's like a tree, makes a beautiful purple flower or pink flower. I'm, you know, I'm a little colorblind. Somebody, is that pink or purple? Tell me in the comments. I'd, I'd 
gladly take your answer. Um, but that's Morning Glory and it is doing wonderful and it grows every year. So I highly recommend these kinds of uh, plants inside your yard. Another one that I recommend in Arizona is this. Blackberries. Blackberries do so phenomenal. They love to spread, they love to grow everywhere. We have another blackberry over there. One's thornless and one's not. Let's see what's thornless and what's not. So actually, the one that's doing phenomenal right now is the thornless. That is awesome. Um, I would be normally hurting right now if I was touching a blackberry the way I just grabbed it. So in Arizona, you can grow quite a bit of uh, fruit trees. You can grow a lot of you know vegetables out here. You can grow a lot of beautiful plants, flowering, smelling, you name it. Uh, don't be doubtful on what you can grow out here. But if you are gonna grow anything, I do highly recommend Moringa, Pigeon Pea, Fig, Pomegranate, and Citrus. You know, these are your, your common ones I would go to if you don't want to take any risk. But if you want to take risk, risk comes with great reward. You know, we get some great rewards and these clients will eventually have bounties of fruit they won't even know what to do with and i'll come over and eat it all no i'm just kidding um well i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did give it a thumbs up if you want to watch more videos don't forget to subscribe to herbal lifestyle if you haven't already and if you have any questions or you have any stories you'd like to share please leave them in the comments below i'd love to go over those later if you find this video informational and you feel like it helps somebody, please share it with them. This is your boy Justin with Herbal Lifestyle. Live your life free and keep on growing.